Welcome to this week's Dirt Shed Show. We're talking about mechanicals. Why are they still a thing when bikes are so good? I don't know, Neil, but we've also got this week a nuke-proof Scout bike giveaway. More free bike nice. coming your way. Keep watching. Plus, I hear there's a horrible bike in the vault this week. Yeah, I've got some stinkers lined up. That plus loads more all coming up on the Dirt Shed Show. Did you see Fort William World Cup the weekend, Rich? I didn't want to miss it. It was amazing. It was. A well, good. Brutal race, as always, Fort William. We saw some bodies getting broken, some big crashes, actually. Joe Breeden had a big crash. Yes, and horrendous weather as well, wasn't uh, it? Yeah, and we saw, this, this has prompted the theme of this week's show, mm. is we saw more than a few mechanicals. There's always punctures at Fort William. Yep. I've done it myself back in the day. <laughs> but we saw a few people with what it looked like, chains that got jammed or the yeah. chains got broken or something was going wrong where they it, couldn't pedal. Exactly, and it got me thinking, Neil, just at such a level nowadays, and with bikes being so amazing, how are mechanicals still a thing? I've always wondered this, especially with like tyre inserts. There's, yep. there's ways of not getting punctures, pretty much, not all guaranteed. Mm, yes. But we still see them quite a lot, particularly for women. I know racers want to have a light bike still, but I think it's mad when you're trying to win the World Cup, or, you know, overall or whatever, yeah. and you're throwing these races away. But it got me thinking as well, these high pivot bikes with the idlers, they've yep. got less chain going around the chain ring. Does that mean they're more likely to come off? I guess there's especially because they still run narrow wide chain rings, especially on downhill bikes as well. And bash guards, we've been looking at them. Yeah, we? we did, we did. So they've got bash guards, they're bending chain rings, they're dropping chains, and it seems, is that the rider's fault or is that equipment fault, do you think? Because then these races are so tight on time to be yeah. decided by something that potentially is outside of a rider's fault. Well, I've always found it was almost always my fault. If I did have a mechanical, it was me riding over my limit and smashing the bike. Mm. So there is definitely part of that, but yeah, it doesn't always go that way. But I suppose preservation does come into that race run as well. They're obviously on the limit, but you, you've got to get your bike to the end. But how do we make these bikes bomb-proof? I know, you know we've talked about gearboxes so many times. Oh, I'm, I'm almost bored of doing it, but <laughs> at least your chain wouldn't come off if you had no. that. We also rode those retro bikes. Oh, yeah. I, my chain did come off a few times like that, but that was an old school. It had a chain guide, but it was not a narrow, narrow wide. No. You didn't have any problems with your bike. Uh, well, not in re regards to the chain, no. And neither did Blake, actually. So were bikes just more solidly built? I think Ten years ago. we were talking about in the office. I think those bikes, that was the era of bikes where we didn't really break the frames. You didn't worry everything about got either, overbuilt did you? for a while and then they've come back down a bit. So I, I don't know if bikes do get broken as much these days. Who knows? Well, I wouldn't like to say. Yeah, let us know what you think in the comments down below because it did get us thinking. It got a mixed review in the office. So what do you think? Yeah. Should should mechanicals still be a thing? Let us know. Comment down below. Yeah, I was thinking, let us know your most common mechanicals Ooh. and how do we fix them? Good one. What's up, everyone? We'll start this week with the biggest news from a windy, wet Fort William. A few big names missing with Finn Isles and Tony Seagrave sitting this one out for concussion and Lloyd Bruni crashing out, breaking a collarbone in practice. It was a slick, rough track as riders had problems with drop trains, punctures, and crashes in these slick conditions. In the women's race, it was an unstoppable Nina Hoffman smashing her way to a win to back up a great performance in the British National just weeks before. Camille Belanche came close, just 3.6 seconds back in second, and Miriam Nicole, with worries of a previous concussion, finished third. In the men's race, it was looking like Thibaut de Preya was unbeatable, sitting in the hot seat for a long old time. Until Omri Piron, that was the Frenchman brawling his way down the track against the elements. It was a French 1-2-3 until Laurie Greenland, the first place qualifier, left the start hut. Up at the first few splits, he made a small mistake in the woods before the road gap, slotted himself into third place. Dead heat in the juniors too. Local Jordan Williams only 0.038 up on Jackson Goldstone, in times that would have been seen them come fifth and sixth in the elite field. Gracie Hemstreet won the junior women's race, hot on her heels was Phoebe Gale second and Amy Kenyon with her debut podium in third. Nukeproof has released an update to the Scout, the do-it-all hardcore hardtail frame that we've come to expect to see under Blake when he's doing something nuts. They've not changed anything drastically, more refining what is already a good recipe for fun. The most notable change is that it features size-specific chainstay growth. So rather than the back end staying the same size and the front end getting longer, they both grow or shrink depending on size and the result of which is a better balanced bike. It's available in new colors in four builds starting at £1,400. Frames are available from June 1st and builds from July 11th this year. Ergon have released a new grip, the GXR. Made in Germany, super light and intended for everything from trail ride to XC marathon. 
These thin grips feature a whole new manufacturing process with something Ergon call air cell rubber, essentially blending tiny bubbles into the rubber to help with vibration damping. There's no clamp or inner core to help keep weight down, and of course, they're ergonomics first, as is the Ergon way. Last but not least, the Crank Brothers Seagrave editions are out now. Stealth black and hot pink in flats or clips. Okay, that's all for now, folks. Let's get back to the shed. Bike giveaway time. You can win a brand new Nuteproof Scout 275. <sighs> it's a stunner, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Go on, Neil. What kind of spec has this bad boy got? What are they winning? Race spec, powder blue. Uh, Nuteproof can throw in the size of drop post you want. Your choice for the flat or clippers Nuteproof pedals. <sighs> uh, it's got Rock Shots Recon 144, Nuteproof Neutron wheel set, Max's tyres, Shimano Dual drivetrain, and full Nuteproof signature component range for the cockpit. Oh my. Wow, I mean, um, that's quite the prize. Yes, if you want to win that stunning bike, the 275, head down to the link in the description below, answer the question, make sure you leave your email and we could be getting in touch with you. You could have this Nuteproof Scout 275 in your garage sooner than you exactly. know. Exactly, we'll be announcing the winners in two weeks time on the show. If you haven't seen the video from yesterday, myself and Blake went to a brewery, built a couple of these bikes and went for an epic ride. Nice. Does it sound good? It was good. <laughs> Neil, I don't know if you've uh, been over to the old GMBN shop lately, but there's some new merch. I've seen it. The new label collection's very nice. It is looking pretty fancy. Yes, head on over to the GMBN shop. The new label collection, hoodies, t-shirts, you name it, is all there, ready for the buying. And, uh, well, you could look as sort of snazzy as us, if you like. Yeah, just as snazzy. Look at that purple t-shirt, that's very nice. Yeah, also, whilst we're on the promo thing, uh, mm. the festival, the Global Bike Festival's coming up soon. I've seen the schedule. There's lots of riding, there's pub quizzes, there's special guests, there's big name DJs, there's some epic rides. Be there or be square. I don't want to be square, so I'm going to be there. <laughs> Neil, I'm going to spare you the singing. Good. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> but it is time for Hacks and Bodges. Brilliant. Uh, what have we got first? Well, this one's from Xavier, who's got an all bare life feet, and he's in Germany, oh, and good. he's made this wall mount. Okay. Uh, he said his old wall mount wasn't cutting it. Seems hassle to get a 2.6 inch tire in, let alone the scratches on the rim. Ooh. So, searched the web, found some inspiration, and did it myself. The original cost 35 to 90 euros. I paid five euros for the broom, <laughs> metal angles, and some miscellaneous things. It's still, he's made a little leash as well for yeah. extra safety, but it's used two halves of a broom. Mm. But that'd be quite mm. tight, wouldn't it, I suppose? But, I mean, that's the first time I've seen a homemade uh, bike. Yeah, rack. yeah, I'm not saying, I mean, it's innovative, it cheap. Is. Uh, what we think, is that a hack or a bodge? Bodge? <laughs> bodge, do you think? Oh, I'd probably agree. Yeah, but still cool. Right, next up we have Lewis and a specialised Hot Rock 12-inch. Look at that little thing. Ah. Uh, I know, he says, so we decided well, to mod our little girl's first pedal bike, but couldn't find a small enough cool mudguard. Yes. So I basically drew the same shape of the mudguard on top of it and cut it to size. Did a similar thing with the pedals, couldn't get her hope ones. Oh. Uh, we bought to fit, so I had to drill out and re-tap the holes in the cranks. That is commitment. Look at the size of those pedals the on The pedals that thing. are bigger than the cranks. It's huge, that isn't is it? That is a pretty fancy way of getting some nice pedals on the bike. Yeah, they'll be old 916s or something yeah, like that. Yeah, does that look like a, an oil slick brake lever on there? It does, doesn't it? Well. I've done the same with the mudguard, actually. I've got one of the bigger ones to cut it down a bit, but well done, because you want your kids to ride without getting stuff flicked up. They don't have any excuse to not ride. So I was like, yeah, I'll put a mug on. That's worth a treat. Good hack, that, innit? I All like right. that. Yeah, very good. Right, next up. Go on, off we, do you want me to go on this uh, one? This is... Alexis and Tibworth on a specialised Canevo. That is, mm. well, I lost his pin, I guess, riding down the trail just after a big drop. My front brake wouldn't engage. The pin had come loose, the pads had dropped out. Nightmare. I've seen that happen before, which is unusual yeah. because those pins don't come out that easily. You've normally got like a little circle up on the other end, haven't you? Yeah, so he's used a couple of those um, key Things, oh, I guess. just it threaded it through. Ah, is that what it is? That's what it looks like. Find the pads, not the pin. Try to zip tie for the brilliant coming. Yeah. I mean, that's going to work. It's going to rattle, isn't it, when you ride? Hey, if it gets you home, exactly. stops your brakes falling apart. Like it, though. I always like those trails. Trailside bodge? Definitely a bodge. Definitely a bodge. Trailside bodge. What are we thinking for the winner, though? No, oh, uh, I guess I would go for the kids' bike. Uh, yeah. Who was that? That, that was that? Lewis. Well, Lewis good. and his. Is kids Hot Rock 12 inch. Congratulations. You have what? What they want? Is it a mug? It is a mug, I believe. Where's the stump mug gone? Stunt mug? Stunt Martin's mug. taking it with him, probably. Don't throw it. Martin's oh, gone on all day. Martin's taking it with him. Anyway, there's a GMBM mug. So send us details, we'll send one of those to you. Nice. Congratulations. 
Okay, the rest of stuff coming up on the channel next week. We've got uh, my video I'm doing, tips and tricks to get the most from your smartwatch if you're a mountain biker, coming up on Very Monday. useful, I like that, Neil. Yes, plus EWS is nearly with us, like yeah. you said. So we have got a ton of content coming your way from both us here on this channel and Doddy and Anna over on Tech, diving into the depths of the pit, seeing what's new, what's going to be going on on riders' bikes. So mm. really excited to see that, Neil. Good stuff. Yeah. Right, it's time for the bike vault. And Rich, what is this horrible bike? I guess we'll find it at some point, but hopefully there's a load of super nice bikes in there as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, shall I kick things off, Neil? Neil, I thought I'd do a bit of a theme this week and I've picked out retro downhill bikes oh, for the best part. Well, the Iron Horse Sunday was a bit of a legendary bike back in the day, although I've heard it isn't as good as everyone thought it was. Oh. But Sam Hill certainly enjoyed riding it. And this is Tim's bike. He's hiked up Snowdon. That must have been wild hard work. <laughs> yeah, because they weren't light. And then railed it back down before lockdown. Uh, the year before we got halfway up and had to bail because of a huge thunderstorm. So Gosh. they did it. They conquered it. Fair, it's quite a nice looking bike, isn't it? I like the raw oh, yeah. metal monster graphics. Go for it. I still <laughs> Lovely stuff. Next up. Oh, wow. I had one of these. Did you? Yeti, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeti 303 RDH with the rail system. So, so as soon as you got a bit of sand in there. Oh, man. Or if you didn't maintain it. But, but we're judging pictures here. Yeah. Not judging bikes. We've, we are judging bikes. We have talked about this past. Has a Yeti ever not got a super nice in the bike vault? It's in those classic turquoise and white. Looks kind of funny nowadays. The angle's on that. It looks it? steep, doesn't it? It looks like it's tall, short, and steep. Yeah, but he's coordinated his grips with the bike. Look at the length of the coil shock on that as well. That's Monstrous. Awkward, isn't it? What are we thinking? Like, you got a super nice that Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you oh look at this. Johnny on his GTLTS. So this, this one's for you. This isn't the one that I love. This is a bit late. I prefer the GTS uh, LTS DH. Did have that bend in the seat tube, but it was kind of, <laughs> the angles were nicer. <laughs> a friend of mine had one of these and he loved it. This is like a late 90s, mid, uh, 97, yeah, 98, I, I guess. Yeah, like 97, 98. Uh, yeah, LTS 1000DS. This is my latest retro build. I got it. Uh, vital, vital MTB bike today. Nice. Johnny, it's nice. It's a cool picture as well with the, like, the reflection in the water. Look at the XTR, those Shimano yeah. Daniel pedals. Are that, those Judy's, those forks? I think that is a DH. Oh, I might be wrong, actually. It might be a Judy. Oh, I can't remember. Super nice, that bad boy. Up. It's got to be, surely. Nice, good work, Johnny. Next up is... There's another one there. <laughs> I know, you've got to skip two on. Okay. Uh, Gerardo wow. Antonio's Foes DHS Mono with those monster tees, which we Oh, it is? Yeah. Is that a, mo yeah, it's it's a monster? Yes, it's a monster. It says monster on. So it I'm... almost looks like it's a super monster, but... Yeah, so the, the crowns, the axles drop through, actually, isn't it? Then? Got a Mexican flag on it. Oh, this is a Missy Geo special for me. It's a monster. Or yeah. Monstrosity. Do you remember? Is, is that a show or shock? I can't remember what they had, to be fair. Oh. Probably not. Massive seat. That was a trend that didn't really stick around for very long. Thank goodness. I mean, it's quite cool, though, isn't it? Come on. I love seeing it, but yeah. it's, a, it's a nice for me. It's a, it's a nice for me, too. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, not quite that? super old. It is a... Where are we? Custom Solid Strike. Do you remember Solid Bike? Oh, solid. I do. Solid. They had a good British team, didn't they? Yeah. They did for a while, actually. Who remember rode the Sam Dale ride right? Solid? I can't remember. can't remember. But look, it's got like... The Spitfire kind of graphic on the top tube and stuff. Uh, uh, kind of looks like a gambler. Yeah, well, that's when I picked it, I thought it was a gambler. Up. But I quite liked the picture as well with like the jumps. And the I like that. I bet it weighs ton, but I like it. I'm Go for it. it. Nice. The first solid bike we probably had on there. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah. What about that? Cove Peeler yes. with a Marzocchi Shiver, gotta be. Is that? It that looks is like it to me. I rode Shiver in <laughs> 2000. It was the flexiest, heaviest. Pretty okay fork of everything. <laughs> yes. Uh, right, what have we got? Yeah, Shiver, Dual Crowns, SRAM X9 gears, Maxxis tyres, Hope Dual Piston brakes. No, you know, it's not bad. It's a nice for me. It is a nice for me as well. There you go. It's, it's and next, this one, obviously, because we have to chuck one in. Do we? Well, we don't, but I thought it's Martin's not, not here. Yeah, it's a well, it's Candel Jekyll before they look nice. Yep. Uh, <laughs> It's in Putney in London. Uh, well, actually, Michael bought this bike for 165 quid. That's a bit of a bargain. If you're into retro cam rails, like mine, 165 quid, that's a bargain. It looks in good nick as well, isn't it? So uh, that's a pretty good trail bike. Yeah. Me. Carbon lefty on there. What do we think? I think it's nice. This, I mean, we're moving away from Daniel Weiss, but this is a Commissar Meta AM 2021 Loma Linda, California. 
Ulysses bike, uh, one year anniversary with my Meta AM. I love that. It's got a Fox 38 up front. Yeah. SRAM access, Renthal fat bars. Pretty swish, that is. Yeah. Good. And that picture snuck in. Pretty nice. Here we go. Another, another, another one for you. What is that? Prof that is a Cannondale Profit. So it kind of after those Jekylls that we just saw, one of these came in. Do you remember Cedric Grassi used these as a four cross bike? Did, stuff? didn't he? Yeah, that's one of these. Good memories of that. Actually, that looks quite good, to be fair. Kind of like that similar shape to the Marins. That yeah, time, do you remember? Yeah, exactly that. So I thought, you know, it's not quite downhill, but it's quite cool, actually, bike. Yeah. I think it's nice. And then last but not least for you. There you go. So this is what mine should have looked like, but mine have been rattle can sprayed. Oof, yeah. Uh, yeah, what we'll say, Josh? Is, um, 2010, this one. New to me. One of the best looking and feeling bikes I've ever owned. Whoa. Bar the mongoose. Uh, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think that's a really good bike, and I loved riding the one I had, so nice one, Josh. I'm going to give that super nice. Nice one. Don't forget, send all your bikes into the uploader. Link in the description down below. We love to see what you've got, really, don't we? Yeah, send them in. Uh, well, <laughs> Right, well that's it, Neil. We're done for another show. We are. Uh, keep oh. your eyes peeled for some great videos coming up. Plus, why don't you like this video, the Dirt yeah, Show, on. and then more people are going to find it. So, yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll catch you soon. See ya.